Hey there, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and we got a bit of a cool down week with a couple comebacks. Shame most of them are terrible, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. The funny thing about January album releases is that if they are not met with immediate competition, they tend to stick around. It's not like there's anything else that's coming, so they tend to get a little bit more run without major disruption. And this looks to have been the case for American Dream by 21 Savage, which has more traction than I frankly expected even beyond the opportune timing, and that also translates to a bit of a delayed collapse on something of a breather week. And again, kind of hard for me to complain about that outside of the songs, we'll get to them. Granted, I have some more audible complaints about our top 10, mostly centered around our returning number one from Jack Harlow, Lovin' On Me. I still don't like this song at all, but when you take the top spot on both the radio and streaming and you've got no sign of slowing down, we're gonna need a bigger disruption to throw this off, and I just don't think that's coming with any of the Megan The Stallion, Nicki Minaj nonsense right now. Let's not even put Justin Timberlake in the conversation. And hell, it handily beat out Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift at number two, which is getting dumped on streaming and the radio, and the only thing really sustaining it is momentum. Now this might open up a door for Greedy by Tate McRae at number three, given that it does have a little bit of traction with streaming and airplay, but it's got a ways to go to close that margin, and that takes us to a competitor that, at least for me, really came out of left field, Lose Control by Teddy Swims at number four. Dominant sales week, good streaming, and if radio can keep picking up, this is a contender, which again, kind of caught me off guard, but overly stiff pop soul that reminds me way too much of Earned It by the Weekend. It's got a track record of working with airplay. Hell, it overtook I Remember Everything by Zach Bryan and Casey Musgraves at number five, which is still dominant on streaming, but given radio is barely moving on it, I am not surprised the momentum's kind of stalled out. And yet, it held over Yes And by Ariana Grande, falling off the number one down to number six. Let's be clear, this was predictable. I called it last week. Despite radio onboarding this fast, it's not enough to compensate for streaming and sales falling back. I suspect it's going to jump up again at some point. It's going to be a question of when. Then we got two Doja Cat songs on opposite trajectories, one being Agora Hills at number seven, surging on the radio to really compensate for streaming lagging behind, and Paint the Town Red at number eight, which is also lagging on streaming, but the radio is dumping it with speed. Then we got Snooze by SZA at number 9, a largely inconsistent week here across the board as streams were up but radio was wavering, and then we got Red Rum by 21 Savage at number 10 with the expected streaming drop off after an album bomb with radio that's nowhere close to filling in all those gaps. That naturally takes us to our losers and our dropouts, where in the latter group we actually did get a couple notable exits alongside the residual 21 Savage. Used to be Young by Miley Cyrus, Great Gatsby by Rod Wave, and Rich Men North of Richmond by Oliver Anthony. I'm still kind of stunned it lasted that long. But when we get to our losers, well, outside of Save Me the Trouble by Dan and Shay falling off rather sharply to 99, it's all 21 Savage in here. Let's start off with the Metro Boomin collabs. With Travis Scott, we have Nana at 30. With Lil Durk, we have Dangerous at 76. And with Young Thug, we got Pop Your Shit at 80. Outside of those, NHIE with Doja Cat at 52, All of Me at 55, Prove It with Summer Walker at 57, Should Have Wore a Bonnet with Brent Fayaz at 63, Sneaky at 71, and Red Sky with Tommy Newport and Mickey Echo at 100. Now where things get a little more interesting come in what's filling up the gaps. Not so much returns, there's only three that came back and they were worth it by Offset and Don Tolliver at 95, When It Comes to You by Friday at 97, and I don't give a fuck with T Grizzly, Mariah the Scientist, and Chris Brown at 98. Where it gets a little more wild comes in our gains, especially in our new arrivals from last week, where Made For Me by Money Long got shipped to radio and jumped up big to 44, alongside 020299 by That Mexican OT getting a nice pick up to 74. I'm not as thrilled by Cole by Dylan Gossett getting a boost to 86 off its loss last week, but country as a whole had a 
okay week with Pretty Little Poison by Warren Zeters jumping up to 26 and Where the Wild Things Are by Luke Combs continuing a very steady run up to 31. Unfortunately the rest here is rather quite mixed. Never Lose Me by Flo Millie's up to 19 as streaming has really got behind it. Soak City Do It by 310 Baby has tangible radio traction at 61 and Act 2 Day to Date by 4 Bats rose up to 62 because his mild virality isn't going away yet. Charming. And that actually gives us with a very reasonable list of new arrivals. And unfortunately, we're starting with number 96, Sensational by Chris Brown featuring DeVito and LoJ. You know, I, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Chris Brown would try to get to Afro Beast to maintain relevance, and if he's gonna put on established acts like DeVito or up-and-comers like LoJ, that's net good, right? Well, that's all balanced out by Chris Brown putting on an accent to try and fit in with this sound, and once again highlight the worst part of the song being him. And it's kind of a shame because the rest of this is okay. The fizzy Afrobeat percussion builds a pretty decent groove against the synthesizers and decent sax. Maybe a little bit more synthetic than it needs to be with that percussion, but there is a humid flow that at least DeVito handles well. I'm not quite as fond as LoJ's voice, he just sounds a bit flimsy here. And the lyrics as a whole are pretty embarrassing, more horny than incredibly sensual. And while that is of course Chris Brown's forte, I'm not sure all of it is his fault this time. Discovering that Sean Kingston of all people has a writing credit on this makes a lot of sense. I don't know, good groove, a good hook is doing a lot of heavy lifting to make this passable. I can't go beyond that. Number 94, First Love by Oscar Ortiz and Edgardo Nunez. <laughs> Okay, last time I talked about Edgardo Nunez was when he was on Peza Pluma's album and had its album bomb, and he was a vocalist on probably the best song on that album. That was enough to create an expectation for me alongside Oscar Ortiz, who I'll admit has not crossed my radar before now. And the vibe of this is pretty straightforward. Ortiz has the smoother voice, Nunez is louder with more texture in his delivery, honestly fits against the accordion, and admittedly pretty decently produced regional Mexican sound with a more textured percussion and especially the defined bass. It's not the slap bass of VVS, but we can't always get what we want. Now, the content's not much to write home about. Basically, they're commiserating about getting dumped. And while they're certainly a bit more sensitive than most of the men I've encountered using this sound in recent years, they also trade off lines on the hook that might confuse you into thinking that they're singing about each other. Uh, of course, they're obviously not. But it's also interplay that they don't do anything interesting with. It's just a very odd choice choice to make. Yet it's far from the worst thing I've heard in the subgenre. I'm just not sure I'm all that impressed. Let's move on. Number 70, Skin and Bones by David Kushner. You know, we do have Hosier back near the public zeitgeist. We don't need to keep trying the David Kushner experiment to make him a thing. But when I heard that he was at least trying to make a song about the temptations of lust, look, it's closer to the right ballpark in comparison with how Daylight was such a ripoff that also lost all that flavor. Now that was all thoughts that I had had before hearing the actual song and Oh my god, it might be worse than Daylight. That lifeless snap, how every elegant texture seems to degrade fidelity around a mix that just wallows in the murk, and that vocal mix. None of the emphasis is sold well. Kushner's utter vacuum of charisma only feels more obvious when Rob Kerwan doesn't seem to have a clue where to place him. But then we get to the lyrics. Okay, look, there are ways to play the Evil Woman song, the succubus you condemn to hell but you can't resist her either, and yet Kushner perhaps delivers the worst possible version of it, the hectoring moral scold who then appears to write about sex like he needs it explained to him with PowerPoint. I fantasize to feel you like a bullet and all your layers to the fullest, the condition of your soul is eroding, that entire second verse that is trying so hard to evoke gothic Catholic melodrama but never fully goes over the edge when you 
you have it to end with, my salvation won't be sacrificed. If there's no risk of hellfire, there's no drama, no matter how flailing the bridge is to set it up. Disney got this right in the animated Hunchback of Notre Dame. I was going to call David Kushner hosier for virgins at Christian youth camp. Honestly, they deserve better than this. This blows. Number 58, No Caller ID by Megan Maroney. Here you come again, who could it be? It's 3 a.m. No Caller ID. So one of the gaps in my listening last year was Megan Maroney's breakthrough album, Lucky, which for a mainstream country release was received rather quite well, especially as it was produced by one of the guys behind Sugarland, which definitely shows forth in some of the warmer guitar tones and the poppier touches. So yeah, I did make some time, I checked it out, and yeah, it's really good. With an eye for clever detail and emotional nuance that made me wish I had given it a proper spin last year. I don't know, Tennessee Orange never impressed me that much. But this is her first single for her next album, and yeah, you know what? This is good for the most part, too. It's hard for me to complain about Plentiful Pedal Steel and a pretty well-written song about being on the recovery of a bad relationship, only for a number with no color ID to hit her up incredibly late at night, and what do you know? It can only be that X. And credit to Marone for selling the song as haggard and exhausted as she would probably feel at the time. Although I gotta wonder if the melody was shifted more into minor chords, it would not be hard to view these late calls as like harassment or stalking, especially as it's clear these drunk dials have been happening more than once. Might have also made the melody a little bit more distinctive than what we got here. That's nitpicking though. But again, that's not the tone we have, and overall it's a pretty good song. But I'm not sure there's quite enough here for me to call it great, I don't know. We'll have to see. And finally, number 15, Beautiful Things by Benson Boone. You know, when Benson Boone left American Idol to do TikTok and he saw some middling success with mediocre at best songs, I was hoping that means we were done with this guy, not giving him his biggest debut to date. So for some context, after his brief success in 2022, he got scooped up by Warner, put out an EP in 2023 that somehow did worse, but now we got this song that's been slow walked properly across social media until release, which got him a very big streaming debut. And okay, you know, I was going to start by saying the melody on the first verse felt oddly familiar against the pianos, kind of reminded me a bit of Colder Weather by the Zac Brown Band, or how the lyrics were hitting the boyfriend country notes of being distressingly clingy toward the girl he's fallen for as he's slowly gotten his life back together, with a sort of raging, self-sabotaging insecurity that should be very worrisome. Then the guitars started ramping up, and while I've always said that Benson Boone is often the worst part of his own songs because of his singing, nowhere is that more obvious than here, where the comparison is less Harry Styles by way of Louis Capaldi and more, oh, this is Lucas Graham at his absolute worst, made all the more damning because the vocal mix is terrible, especially the harmonies that sound audibly punched in and they don't blend at all. I mean, say what you want about Bruno Mars's early 2010s pop histrionics, he could at least sing way better than this. So yeah, this really sucks. Skip it. And yeah, it makes for a pretty rough week where I honestly cannot pick the worst. So we're getting a tie with Beautiful Things by Benson Boone and Skin and Bones by David Kushner. Deal with it. Both these songs are terrible. We don't need them around. Best is easily going to No Color ID by Megan Maroney. Kind of by default. Competition this week was not great. But next week though... I mean, between new Justin Timberlake and the beef between Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj, it's probably going to get messy. Stay tuned for that. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.